Halloween in horror. Served chilled. Shock tales. Just back from starring in Johnny Thunder versus Mecca Johnny Thunder. It's our <laughs> master of ceremonies, the aforementioned Johnny Thunder. I can't even tell which one I would be. Would I be? Because I have like knee braces and support hose and everything else. So I'm already sort of Mecca. They had, right? to, they had to get the big show to body double to throw in the Mecca <laughs> Godzilla co- costume. Uh, I, I couldn't believe that you, what you were even saying to me, you're like, wait a minute. I actually got a big budget screener for once. Dude, no, you don't understand. For the first time in what, 15, 16 years, I got a real movie because I had just seen um, the the, uh, the the Fathom event a couple weeks ago of Shin Kamen Rider, which Kamen Rider was one of my favorite shows in the in the 70s, which is actually currently playing on Tubi. So I want to quick, before we talk about Ultraman, I wanted to say if anyone out there is a Shin Rider fan or if you've seen Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman are from the same people. So I would definitely seek out Shin Godzilla, which we never covered. And I would definitely check out Shin Kamen Rider, which just came out because it was just really drills down to the quintessential storyline of Godzilla, of Kamen Rider, and of Ultraman. But yeah, I was just like, oh my God, this is like an actual movie. Um, so I was so excited at it because what was funny was I couldn't catch the Fathom event when this was out, I think in January or December. So I've been looking for Shin Ultraman on demand or you know where, wherever it would be, and I've seen it hasn't been out yet. And literally like two days later, like the phone's listening to my thoughts, which... It probably is. Um, you know, I got this. I, I got this. It said Shin Ultraman. And I'm like, oh, this is weird. And I was like, oh, my God, it's a real movie. So I immediately sent it to you. I'm like, are you an Ultraman fan? And you were like, no, should I be? <laughs> but then I mentioned Shin Godzilla and I mentioned Shin Kamen Rider. And you were like, oh, yeah, I love Shin Godzilla. So I know, you know, I mean, Shin Godzilla obviously falls within horror or sci-fi that we cover. And Shin Kamen Rider kind of gets in there because he does. He is a cyborg and he fights uh, cyborg monster hybrids and stuff. And Shin Ultraman, obviously he fights Kaiju and he's a giant robot. So we can definitely cover this on our show. So if anybody out there is an Ultraman fan, you probably know the basic story, but again, this movie drills down and kind of retells the origin of Ultraman. So we learn the appearance of a giant unidentified life form known as S class species, which are Kaiju has become commonplace in Japan. So their government forms a defense task force known as the SSP. And after a particularly challenging encounter, a giant silver robot descends from the sky to rescue Japan dubbed Ultraman. This giant's identity and purpose remain a mystery. As we said, this is a complete reimagining and retelling and reboot of the very beginnings of the Ultraman story. Um, as I said, I've been a huge fan of all things kaiju, all things robots, all things Japanese ever since I was little. In addition to, like I said, the Universal Monsters, I'm a huge comic book fan. I'm a huge fan of these types of shows so like i said when i saw common rider was coming out i was like oh my god we gotta go see that it was one night and they added a second night and shin common rider was fantastic and i also really really dug shin ultraman as i said it's a breakneck pace just like the other two films it really is just relentless it just never gives up and a lot of the times there's a lot of like quick edits and there's a lot of things that maybe don't make much sense but i think that's also intentional and there's purposeful decisions made in terms of cuts and edits and storytelling because it literally is honoring and becoming a modern homage to the original shows yeah. and the original story. So do, do they have know, an epilepsy warning at the beginning of these movies? Yeah, really exactly. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> but that's part of the charm, you know, oh, again, yeah. when you're a kid, you know, even like I said, rewatching them now, um, you know, again, when you watch, you know, all the, the Godzilla movies or you watch, I said, common rider, or you watch Ultraman, you know, the editing doesn't make sense. And sometimes the storytelling doesn't make sense, but that's intentional in these three films. So I know we're talking about Ultraman, but I'm also lumping in the other two because I think if you want to sit down and have like a movie marathon, which would be awesome, do Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, and then Shin Kamen Rider. And it would just be such a blast to like hang out and just have this, you know, film festival. 
Um, I, I, I thought it was great. I loved it. Again, go, go not sh- a lot of logic. You yeah. know, things don't make sense, but that's part of the charm. And just go into it and just say, this is going to be two hours of just complete and utter nonsense and it's it's fantastic we're gonna we're gonna put a sheet up a white sheet up pin it up to the wall and we're gonna Absolutely. like bring a projector and we're gonna have yeah. a, we're gonna yeah. have a uh a, yeah a movie marathon down here at the last bar on the left yeah so, absolutely yeah we, we spare no expense we'll we'll we will break out the white sheet i can't <laughs> promise it's exactly white there's probably a lot of stains because it came from Baker's house, and, and, but and, and and don't hold that little uh, UV thing near it <laughs> by any means. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that Toho knows its audience. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Like within minutes, you've got giant monster on monster <laughs> action, destroying <laughs> shit and causing mayhem. And it just, yeah, like it just doesn't stop. It's no, just, no. You know, you've got a, you've got like little pauses, little pregnant pauses in there. And then they're right back to, uh, more, more, more fighting, more mayhem, more destruction. And, and the minute, yeah, the minute people start talking, all of a sudden there's like a radio alert. You're like, what? And all of a sudden it just cuts to a monster. You're like, what, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I, I loved it. Like I said, there's nothing better than just huge mass destruction of yeah. of just everything, and it's it was fantastic. So yeah, I thought it was well acted. I thought it was well done. Um, so like you said some of the effects are definitely. Um, homages to the originals, like I said, with regard to Godzilla, the same as Common Rider, and in this one. So yeah. I recommend all three films. Again, I know we're talking about Ultraman, but I would definitely also check out Common Rider because I was going to do a review of that. But since we got the Ultraman link, I said, why don't we just roll them into one? And I'm going to say I recommend all three films. Yeah, absolutely. This might be the first time. I, I mean, actually, I don't know. I was really impressed by uh, the voiceover casting that they did for the dubbing. Like yeah. sometimes it's it's hit and miss, but they I thought it was really great. Hey, by the way, I just want to know was this my I don't know if it was just on my end. Did you have any problems with the screener where there was some audio point, issues? With some audio, I was yeah. like, I was like, uh, I think they had they hired Scully as the audio engineer on this <laughs> one because well, you know, I was that was that what I would say the only thing that disappointed me is because I always watch whether it's original content, say like on Netflix of any of the Korean dramas or um, any of the other you know Japanese programming like Alice in Borderland or anything else that I watch. Um, I always watch the subtitle version because I think you lose a lot if you don't have the original voice actors to understand and hear the uh the emotion and the inflection of their voices. Yeah. So that was the only thing I was a little bummed out that I couldn't see the subtitle. But yes, the screener did have some issues, but I'd rather have a screener with a little bit of issues than no actual movie screener yeah. so i was i was thankful <laughs> well here's the thing be thankful I, for what you get because you it, get what you get and you don't get upset it was only a little spotty somewhere way past the the, the first half of the movie right but it was also people just yeah, talking it, and it's like, it, here's the thing is i i was getting really pissed off because i thought it was on my end and i'm like trying to f with the speakers and i'm like is the wire loose what's going on here and then i <laughs> then like the audio kind of came the dub came back in right so i had all the sound effects were fine the background right. music was fine it was only a little bit of the dub i started making up my own dialogue and then i got really pissed and then I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I like, I go, what am I, what am I talking about? I go, it's a kaiju movie. It's giant (laughs) monster dudes in a silver silver suit smashing (laughs) shit. Uh, This is actually way better without the dialogue. I don't even care. And it was like, I was like, wow. So anyway, I I loved it. Yeah, it was kick ass. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Go go check it out. I'm going now. Heaven help you. 